Hello, and thank you for joining us on Running. I'm your host and moderator, Zachariah Hughes. We have a pretty packed table for this next segment, so I'm going to jump right in. I'm here with the four candidates running for seat D, Eric Croft, Dustin Darden, uh, Ira Perman, and Adam Trombley. So welcome, gentlemen, and let's start, Mr. Croft, with your opening statements. Thank you um, to KAKM and thank you for tuning in tonight. My name is Eric Croft uh, and I'm running for Municipal Assembly because I believe Anchorage has a bright future if we have the courage to grab it and make it. I served for 10 years in the Alaska House of Representatives uh, representing uh, Spinard. I understand how the state's fiscal uh, management and sometimes mismanagement can affect Anchorage. I worked for uh, two years as a municipal prosecutor putting uh, away uh, criminals and making our streets safe and most recently served in the school board where we cut administrative expenses by a substantial amount and focus those in the classroom. I'm looking forward to a great debate tonight. Thank you and Mr. Darden your opening remarks. Hi my name is Dustin Darden. I like starting off things like this. I love you Lord and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my king, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, okay, that is the 45 sweet seconds. sound Thank you, Mr. in your ear. All right, and uh, Mr. Perman, uh, your opening remarks. Yeah, th thank you, Zach. I'm Ira Perman. I'm running for West Anchorage Assembly. Uh, the number one concern of neighbors in the district that I've encountered is the future of our economy. They're concerned about it and they want a clear path forward. I'm the only candidate of the four here that lived through the 1980s recession and not only lived through it, but lived through it with a position of responsibility. I came through that. My business grew. Uh, based on that experience, I'm very optimistic about the uh, future for Anchorage and I think I could lead this organization, the, the Assembly, forward to make our future bright. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Trombley. I'm Adam Trombley. I'm a proud sponsor of Proposition 8, the proposition that if it passes, will restore our tax cap to the way that it was supposed to be. It's going to undo the tremendous amount of damage that current members of this Assembly have done in this administration. During my time on the Assembly, I consistently honored the issues that I campaigned on. I limited the growth of property taxes. I consistently introduced budget amendments that budget amendments to reduce your property taxes. And I'm the first assembly member to ever f successfully privatize a function of government that has seen real, set, real private sector job growth. Thank you for the time this evening. I look forward to the debate. All right, thank you. So we're going to move right on into questions and try to get as many as we can with a uh, packed slate of sure. four candidates. Mr. Croft, the first question's for you, and then we'll, we'll move around. Everyone will have the, the same question sure. to answer. But starting off, um, assuming that state aid to the city continues to drop, uh, where should the assembly look? to close budget gaps in the next three years. And this is for all of you, but please be specific. If it's uh, spending reductions, which ones? If it's new sources of revenues, from where, Mr. Croft? As I said in the opening, we concentrated on the school board on reducing our administrative expenses and putting that into the classroom. I think we can do more of that at the city level. And I've been a proponent of, f for a long time, that the school district and the um, municipality share services, that is, uh, stop duplication of services. We've had some success on that, uh, sharing an ombudsman, um, sharing uh, auditors, uh, but we haven't had the big savings yet. And, and so one of the things I, I want to work on on the assembly is how we uh, prevent that duplication and achieve some substantial savings. Okay, and so Mr. Darden, the same question to you on where to close budget gaps in the next three years. Well, it's simple. I mean. We don't have the money, we don't spend. You know, uh, we're in a budget shortfall. We don't, we, don't, uh, we don't put bond initiatives through that are hundreds of millions of dollars. Specifically, like the stuff you're gonna vote for, you have five days left to vote. You can vote at the library, but you gotta vote uh, yes on eight. We, I, mean, I mean, taxes are increasing, these bond initiatives. Basically, you're the boss now. You're the Anchorage resident that's gonna decide how we save. So you need to go vote and you need to Look at these bond initiatives. If we don't need them, we don't need to, uh, we don't need them. So you need to vote. Okay, and uh, Mr. Perman. Thank you. I think the first place to look is at the man in the mirror, or in the case, the four men in the mirror here. A very small way to save some money is maybe the assembly salaries are a little high. It seems to me that when you've got four guys interested in running for this race and probably would uh, do this job for a lot less, why pay $30,000 a year? But in a more uh, medium-sized scale, we have like, 17 city planners. In a time when things are slowing down, do we need 17 city planners? Can we get by with eight? 
10, whatever that number is, there are small economies you can realize in every department of city government. I've been working with the assembly for six years as a staffer. You can cut back small amounts in just about everybody area, in every area. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Trombley. Sure. One of the great ways that you can actually save millions of dollars every single year and you can transfer those funds into our four modes. When you look at our budget, for example, I'll take a step back. It's police, fire, public works, and debt service. Our debt service payments are around 50, $55 million a year. That's, that's directly property taxes. If you have a six-year six year fiscal plan that says every year we're not going to put more in bonds on the on the ballot than we're retiring in debt, you can free up millions of dollars every single year that you can put that you can put towards police, that you can put towards fire, that you can put towards roads. But you have to have a fiscal discipline to say we're going to pay off debt, and we're going to use that use those funds to fund our most the, the, the issues that we have the biggest priority for. Okay, and so uh, for this next question, Mr. Darden, we'll start with you and right. then have the same order, but uh, with less. Uh, state money going to education. How should the city change its approach to funding public schools? Well, it seems to be working. You know, yeah, keep keep fun in the schools. Um, you know, you got a you got a lack of money. It's all common sense stuff. You don't have the money. You got to do what you got to do. You got to impro improvise, adapt, and overcome. And if that means consolidating certain services, um, if that means whatever it takes, but you work with what you got. You know, it's just like if you're a homeowner and you only have five bucks for dinner, you might get a couple apples and some peanut butter. You know, it's just, you got to work with what you have. It's just common sense stuff. You know, politics is boring, but I'm hoping that the 73% of people who don't vote just show up and vote. Mm. Okay, Mr. Perman, to you on schools. Very simply, uh, we're going to have to continue what uh, Eric has said the school board has been trying to do, which is to get a control on the administrative costs, keep the uh, dollars in the classroom. That's very important. Um, I do think we have an issue with the current school bond. Uh, for the first time in my life, I'm probably not going to be supporting a school bond. This one is simply too large. It's like taking on a mortgage at a time when you're entering a recession. You just don't do that. My advice to the school board would be take this one back and divide it up over several years so that you're paying down your debt faster than you're adding on debt. I think you can make those boilers, buses, and roofs last a few extra years. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Trombley. Well, from a, from a state law standpoint, several years ago, the state actually changed their funding mechanism and how, do we ca how you calculate. The city already gives the max. We can no longer give anymore. If we do, the state simply reduces the amount that they give to the school district. One of the ways that you can provide additional funding, again, and, and the assembly can only say yes or no to the budget. We can't dictate to the school board how they function and say, here's how you're going to allocate your resources. One of the things that we can do is we can absorb more of the cost of the school resource officers. That's a resource that the schools did want, but the, the municipality pays for the police officers. And I believe that that's now split 50-50. But if the municipality absorbed that other 50%, the other half of that cost, that would free up several million dollars for education. Mm, thank you. And so, Mr. Croft, the question is to you on uh, how to continue supporting public education. Right. I'm a strong supporter of public education, proud of my service on the school board. We did switch, Adam, to uh, from... Uh, uh, to, to the school district getting that full amount paid by the muni. So we've gone over um, to 100 um, percent. On the bonds this time, um, I made the motion to reduce the bond and I made the motion to study capacity in school closures. Very difficult for a school district to face, but in this fiscal time with flat enrollment, we just simply have to. It was a tough fiscal decision, but one that can save us hundreds of millions of dollars. We reduced it. It is below what uh, we're retiring, though with the lack of state bond reimbursement, that, right. that number um, makes less uh, um, significance than it, than it used to. But we absolutely reduced it, and for the first time in uh, decades, we don't have any new school construction on the bond. It is simply taking care of what we have. Okay, and so Mr. Perman, this next question, we'll start with you. I am curious where you get your information about people's concerns uh, in the district that you're seeking to thank you, represent. Thank you, thank you. I've been going door to door in the district since uh, last summer. And uh, as I go to the door, I keep a little tick of the things that they ask about. I ask them, what are the concerns that you have? And several months ago, those concerns were public safety and public education. But as we turn the corner into the new year, and I think because of the interest in the legislature and what's happening with the state, people are now concerned about the future of the economy, about their jobs, their kids' jobs, uh, what's the value of their house. That has taken, jumped up to number one. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Tromley, the same question to you on where you're getting information about the constituents uh, and their concerns in your district. Sure. Well, there's obviously door-to-door -door without regurgitating that. Uh, there's, there's, all, there's all sorts of media, uh, the paper, 
talk radio, uh, candidate forums, just simply talking to people in coffee shops and restaurants in the district. So you just open up, ask anybody you have anybody questions. Mm. And so, what uh, do you go out and specifically make time for that? I'm just I'm a little. Oh, absolutely. Okay. I mean, if you're a candidate running for 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 office, you have to you have to go out there and knock on doors. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and Mr. Croft, the question's to you. Yeah, the best source is door to door, and and uh, I believe I've done more than any other candidate, and uh, I'm most likely to be finishing up Sand Lake. And I, I've seen, uh, I've been asking in Sand Lake, has anyone else knocked on on your door? And 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 um, disappointed to find that not many others. It, it's important because you get uh, some of the best information. Um, uh, John, who told me about his house flooding from Chester Creek. Uh, Shara about special needs kids. Um, uh, Richard and Turnigan, whose fence has been wiped out three times and wants to know why, <laughs> what we can do about that. Uh, snow plowing, people telling me where there is a problem house that may be a crack house or, a, a, or criminal activity, people telling me about Edinburgh Drive and why it needs to be redone. It's the best source of information. Okay, and so Mr. Darden. Well, I disagree with that. You know, when you're at home, you know, someone's knocking on your door, you just want to have your breakfast, I try and leave them alone. You know, I, I've knocked on some doors, but I, I try not to do it too much because I think people just kind of want to live their lives. You know, they don't want someone knocking on their door. You know, when they're interrupting their breakfast, having their their uh, their water, which which I want to talk about. I've I've heard on social media, my Facebook page is Dustin Darden, my GoFundMe thing. You search uh, Dustin Darden for my GoFundMe thing, but they tell me, uh, everyone's telling me this water is poisoned with fluoride, and I've been talking to Assembly for years, saying, hey, we got to get this fluoride out of the drinking water. There's there's major political activists on all sides of these uh, elections. And they, there's people in every group who want the fluoride gone. And I'm going to get rid of the fluoride. I'm going to get the majority of the assembly to agree with it. I'm going to take it out, take it out of the municipal charter. Okay. So that's what I want to do. All right. There okay. may be some time for that in the next question, which is on public safety. We'll start with Mr. Mm -hmm. Trombley. I'm curious what public safety means to you and how large of a concern it is for you in Anchorage right now. Well, public safety is always a concern. What does it mean? It means first responders. But it, it also means how, how do we how do we deploy our first responders? Uh, whether is it community policing? Is it you know how, how do how do we how do we operate those those departments? Those those are made at the chief of police. Those are made at the, the fire chief. How how they deploy those resources? I know that there's a big discussion right now about how many police officers we're supposed to have. And while I agree with that, that we need more officers, how do we get there? How do we pay for it? The federal government provides certain re f funding sources, like safer grants for, for firefighters, for example. Those are only good funding sources for three years, then the turns on a municipality. I think in order, to meet, in order to meet our demands for public safety, we really have to look and say, let's reduce some of our debt service, let's take that money, and let's fully fund our police and fire. Okay, so Mr. Croft, uh, what does public safety mean to you, and how large of a concern is it for you in Anchorage right now? It's very important, and I'm proud to be the only candidate here to have the support of the police uh, troopers and firefighters. I've also the only can to serve as a municipal prosecutor, so actually go into trials, work with the police officers to to keep our streets safe, to put people in jail. You learn a lot about uh, the day-to-day -day life of police officers when you have them on the stand and you're talking to them about how you make these prosecutions stick. Uh, we absolutely need to increase our police force. We let it slip over the last six years um, to dangerously low levels, and uh, so that's uh, that's a big priority. Finding out. Um, uh, how to pay for it is difficult, but it has to be a priority for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Darden, you on public safety. Well, the cops need some more AR-15s. I've heard recently that they've had to give the new recruits their new AR-15s and expect them to use a 12-gauge or find some kind of firearm. They need, we need to arm these cops to the gills because the Obama administration currently has injected refugees from nations that are known to be radical terrorists. We need to address this on a local level, and we need to be protected. We need, in public safety, we need to have less restrictive gun laws within the government, within colleges. Everyone should have the right to bear arms. And any legislation that supersedes the Second Amendment, the people who brought these issues to light need to be held accountable. Okay. Thank you for that. And uh, Mr. Perman. Thank you, Zach. For my district, it means being able to have a police officer when you want them. That's not the case now. If you're living in uh, Valley of the Moon area around Aurora Street, or if you're living around Campbell, uh, the Campbell Creek area by the trail, people are not able to get police when they want. I'll tell you a story. My wife sent me out to uh, Walgreens to get something for her on a Saturday night, and I saw a, a hit and run accident. I had to stay as a witness. 
Uh, we called it in. They said, we'll be there in, in 15 minutes. Well, 15 minutes went by, then a half hour went by, 45 minutes went by, an hour went by. We called and said, what's the problem? Well, we're so busy taking care of man down calls, which is a huge problem for us, that they couldn't respond to something as simple as this. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough police. It's as simple as that. We have to get some more. Okay. Um, thank you all. We're going to move over into the opportunity for you to ask questions of each other. So, Mr. Croft, starting with you, um, you have one question to ask to any of your opponents, and then there'll be time afterwards after their response for rebuttal. For rebuttal. Uh, for Mr. Trombley, then, uh, in 2013, Ernie Hall and uh, Mayor Sullivan proposed AO 37, mm -hmm. a measure that removed the right of municipal workers to organize into unions. You originally supported this measure, but when the political pressure increased, you changed your mind and opposed it. Mayor Sullivan publicly accused you of not sticking, quote, to your guns on key issues that conservatives are interested in. What do you really believe on the right to organize, and why did you change your position? Sure. Well, the premise of your question is wrong, that I changed my vote because, because the political pressure got too great. I have a tremendous amount of correspondence that's saying that if this item goes to the ballot, it will lose. And it did. Now, I know the unions talk, and they say that, well, we really hate AO 37. But when you read their contracts, and when you look at the negotiations for their contracts, they negotiated in the terms of AO 37 despite it, being, despite it being suspended, other than the medical part. So there were good things in there saying, look, we're only going to increase, we're, we're going to have CPI plus one on your wage increases. We're going to combine holidays. We're going to combine, we're going to combine medical, me medical care plans. Those are good for the city. It's great for the taxpayer. My concern was that if it goes to the ballot, it's going to lose, okay. and it did. And that's all the time we have. So your response, Mr. Croft. Yeah, I appreciate the response. The, um, uh, to me, the right to organize is a key value, and uh, I'm not going to change uh, uh, my values uh, in this race. I'm going to communicate them, not change them. Um, on AO 37, there were parts of AO 37 that made sense. And on the school board, we directed that our contracts be no more than that benchmark. And in fact, we negotiated contracts. Uh, with our unions that were below those that the, that the city did in a much more contentious process. So you can save money without declaring war on your employees. And I think it, ma it makes much more sense. Okay, so Mr. Darden, it's your opportunity. But before we start, I just want to remind everyone the questions, we only have about 20 seconds for it. So try and keep it short instead of, uh, you know, uh, the long um, way of getting into it. But mm -hmm. your, your question for an opponent. Mr. Croft, uh, me being a municipal employee, I'm a union member, I'm a local of Carpenters Local 1281. I'm a member of IBW Local 1547. Um, I wanted to ask you specifically, you know, I'm a working guy. I stand up for the working people. I'm working back. But what do you feel about the fluoride added to the public drinking supply? Would you be in favor of removing it from the public drinking supply? Yes or no? Um, I, I don't support removing the fluoride. I think it, that it uh, makes sense as a, as a safety precaution for us. So, you know, Mr. Darden, I'm not for removing it. Okay, a rebuttal from you, Mr. Dragon. Well, that's, that's why I'm running, because this is, a, this is a known fact. The bag of fluoride that we add to our drinking water every day is marked with a skull and a crossbones. It's a poison, and we, and we ingest this stuff into our body. May it be good topographically to the tooth applied for prevention of tooth decay? Possibly. It might not even be good for that. but. We ingest it into our body, which is known to cause cancer. Harvard's done studies on it, and it's shown, Harvard has shown studies of lowered IQs. It's dropping like flies with, with cities and countries that are removing it. We need to just stop adding this crap to our water. Okay. Uh, we're going to move on to Mr. Perman, your opportunity to ask a question of an opponent. Thank you. And I'm going to ask Adam Tromley. Mm -hmm. uh, first, Adam, welcome to West Anchorage. Thanks. I know you've only been here a short while, sure. And but you're certainly entitled to run for any any position you want. That's mm -hmm. that's within Mr. your Mr. Perman, I'm going to remind you it's 20 seconds that's on the right. question. You have not attended a single community council meeting or any community council mm -hmm. meeting of any kind in West Anchorage. How can you possibly represent the interests of West Anchorage on the assembly? Well, again, the premise of your question is uh, not not true. I have attended a community council meeting, but earlier in the year I made a commitment to coach basketball, specifically at South High School, and a lot of people gave back to me. I, I, I was fortunate enough to get a Division I scholarship. And there were people that spent a tremendous amount of time with me. And I made a commitment to work with kids. And their practices were late in the evening that conflicted with community councils. So I honored my commitment to work with children and to make sure that I could get back to the same kind of, in the same manner that people worked with me to help me be successful in athletics. 
Okay, and Mr. Perman, your rebuttal? I must have missed the one community council that you went to, and I must have missed something else. It's, I applaud you for your work in, in working mm -hmm. with kids in basketball, but you have to know this community. Assembly seats are representative. They represent neighborhoods. Neighborhoods mm -hmm. represented by community councils. If you don't go to community councils, you can't possibly understand your neighbors. Simple okay. as that. Okay. And Mr. Trombley, it's your opportunity to ask a question. If sure. Mr. Croft, you, you've come out and you've publicly opposed Proposition 8, a proposition that's going to restore a tax cap that's worked pretty well since its inception until recently the Assembly and the mayor decided to blow it up so they could, so they could collect more in taxes. Why do you suppose? Why, why do you support in that that move that would have the ability to raise taxes? Well, the, the difficulty with the tax cap is uh, 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 the proposal that's on the ballot is it it ties our hands in terms of one-time funding, and uh, um, it's a difficult issue that I urge everybody out there to look uh, into. I've. Uh, knocked on the doors of Republicans who were sure that they liked this tax cap proposal and the more they looked into it the less they liked it. When we have money that comes in and we can't rely on it, uh, if you use it then to reduce the tax cap, um, you, you tie the Assembly's hands in terms of how it can use that money and I think we're going to either have to turn it down, put it into our reserves, um, or, or, um, or and, and, and that itself um, uh, raises taxes in the short run. So I worry about what it does, and I think it'll have the opposite effect than what you've said. Okay, and a rebuttal from you. The analysis has been done that if we can go back to 2008, if this tax cap change had been in place since 2008, you would be paying an additional $400 in taxes for every $100,000 assessed value. The idea that we take one-time funding and we use it to offset property taxes, I disagree with that. I don't think that that's a good policy. I think, that's, that, I think that money could be better used elsewhere. The fact is that the tax cap has worked very well for a very long period of time. It's kept the growth of property taxes down. And now the idea that somehow we're going to support a way to reach deeper into people's pockets when, other, when, when people are losing their jobs, fear of losing their jobs, I think is, is, is disgusting what the, the Assembly did. And to support that, I, I don't understand how we could... How that, how, how that can be justified. Okay, we have time for one more question. I want to make it district specific to West Anchorage. We'll resume where we uh, left off. So, Justin, uh, Mr. Darden, this first question is for you. Uh, what do you think of the Spinard Road project and how would you like to see it advance? Well, there's no pull offs for buses, and you need to have pull off for buses because if, if you don't have a place for a bus to pull over, you're congesting, you're making it more dangerous than it already is, you know. Um, you know, you need, to, you need a common sense person sitting on the assembly and that's what I am I'm common sense you know there's all kinds of legislation going through you know we're talking about stuff about okay uh, who uses the bathroom if it's a if it's a female bathroom now a male can use the bathroom if they have a dress on this is ridiculous if you're a male use the male bathroom if you're a female use the female bathroom all this stuff is crazy don't put fluoride in your drinking water don't add poison you know lower taxes stand up for the working people I was opposed to AO 37 100 percent you know just, just vote. Most people don't vote. Tell 10 people to vote. Go to my Facebook page, okay. Dustin Darden. All right. Uh, the question is on the Spinard Road. And Mr. Perman, to you, uh, what your assessment Thank is Thank you, Zach. Of? I've been working on the Spinard Road project for six years as an aide to the Assembly. I live within two blocks of Spinard Road. I walk it at least once a week. The Spinard Road issue, this is, by the way, is phase three. The first phase being the, the southern phase, the second phase being the road down the, the hillcrest down the Spinard uh, to, the, to the creek. This is from hillcrest to 30th. And the idea here is to make this thing a safer road to walk on, bike on, drive on, and also to encourage the development of businesses. That's a road that businesses go out of business on a regular basis, and we need to get that road working as a business section so that, one, our property taxes that we can collect from there go up, and that it's just more successful. Young people love that road. Young people love Spinard Road. Young people like that part of town. This is their road. I'm very much in support of it. Okay, and Mr. Trombley, to you on sure. Spinard Road. I think it's a good balance. I think there's only two property owners that, that are skeptical of it. And I, I like the fact that there's bike lanes there. Unfortunately, there's going to be some eminent domain in order to take some private property, but in order to make that road functionable it, in, and to meet current code, it, it's unfortunately a necessity. But the business owners have, uh, the city has buy-in from the business owners, and I think it strikes a good balance between pedestrian safety, biking safety, um, increased access to the area. Okay, and Mr. Croft. My uh, children and I, when, uh, when they go to West each morning, I walk them in, I walk the dog with them. We cross that road every uh, morning. Um, we, we've walked it um, for years. Um, when they were very young, holding their hands with cars that close to them, 
uh, was a scary proposition. You hold on that much tighter. Uh, it's been badly needed for a long time. And this whole Spinard area is, is having a renaissance that is not government induced or even started. It's it's on its own, but we can we can help it its momentum. We can help uh, grow. So this with the, with bike lanes with. Um, uh, pedestrian access, it's safer, but it also is a catalyst for an area that's growing and, and we need to support that. Thank you all for your responses to those questions. We have time now for closing remarks and again we'll start in alphabetical order the way we open. So Mr. Croft, uh, your closing remarks. Thank you for the uh, time today. It does go quickly. We were warned of that and, and um, it does. My name is Eric Croft. I appreciate your time tonight. appreciate KAKM's um, uh, management of these debates. I have the proven public safety record, the uh, endorsement from our police and fire, the experience working on the municipal prosecutors, experience cutting our administrative costs at the school uh, board level, uh, and experience in the legislature. Uh, I hope they will consider voting for me uh, for municipal assembly on April 5th. Thank you so much, Mr. Croft. And Mr. Darden, it's your opportunity. Thank you so much, Zach, for having me on the show. Uh, you know, last time I saw you, we were skateboarding, you know. I just think politics is boring. So 73% of people don't go out and vote that are registered. Why? Politics is boring. Hey, I'm a regular guy. I'm going to stand up for constitutional liberties. I'm going to listen to the public. I've gone to so many assembly meetings, and the public has testimony. The assembly's already made up in their mind what they're going to do. I'm going to listen to you. Go to my Facebook page. Vote. Tell 10 your friends to vote. Do something crazy and vote. You, we can change the way this country goes if you do something about it and vote. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Darden. And Mr. Perman, your closing remarks. Thank you, Zach. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much, KAKM. Uh, again, I'm Ira Perman, running for West Anchorage Assembly. I've lived in the neighborhood for 40 years. I've done a lot of community service work. I have done a lot of work in the past six years with the Assembly. I know exactly what I'm getting into. I can hit the ground running. Uh, but I also bring that element of success in the business community, which was through a recession. I think we need that right now. I'm very bullish on the opportunities ahead of, ahead of us in Anchorage, and I look forward to your support on April 5th. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Mr. Trombley, your closing remarks. I appreciate your time this evening. I believe the greatest path to, pr pr to prosperity, whether yours or the city's, is through a government that's limited, that spends less, that taxes less. My opponents believe the opposite. They believe in a government that expands, that taxes more, that spends more, is, a great, is, is the way to prosperity. I appreciate your time this evening, and I appreciate your vote on April 5th. Okay. That was Dustin Darden, Eric Croft, Ira Perman, and Adam Trombley, the four candidates for Anchorage Assembly Seat D in West Anchorage. Thank you again for taking part in the show, gentlemen, and thank you and our audience for watching our program. Up next, I'll be joined by Ronald Oliva and incumbent Assemblyman Dick Traney, both vying for seat F in the Anchorage Midtown District this election. We'll be right back.